So let's take a look at 5.1. All right, so I'm gonna to try to do like one question from each type. If there's more questions that you guys have, I'll go back and do more, but I wanna do at least one from each. So looking at the first two questions, it says use the graph to solve the system of linear equations and check your solution. So here actually graphs it for us. So we look at the graph to tell us our answer. Does anybody remember what, where our answer would be? Looking at the graph, what would our answer be? Perfect. It's where the two lines intersect, so that would be 0, negative 2. So remember, it's always x and then y on our x-axis. We're on 0, and we go down to negative 2 on our y-axis. So this would be our answer. Oh, that's mm -hmm. that's really yeah. All right, in 3 through 6, we actually have to graph them. So looking at number 3, let's graph the first line first. So we graph each line separately. Is this in a form that we like to graph in? We prefer it to be y equals mx plus b. I think we all kind of like graphing that way better. We can make this y equals mx plus b, um, but we would get fractions here. So we could graph it using our x and y intercept. How would we find the x intercept? By making y zero. By making y zero. So we plug in zero for y, so it goes away. So we have three x is equal to two. So we divide both sides by three. So x is equal to two over three, two thirds. So we're gonna go to the right on our x axis, two thirds. So it's not quite to one yet. Mm -hmm. We found the x-intercept, so where we cross the x-axis. Now we can find the y-intercept, and then we just connect the two dots. So we're not using y equals mx plus b for this one. We'll do it in the next one. To find our y-intercept, we're going to make the x equal 0. So we get rid of the x. So we have negative 5y is equal to 2. So divide by negative 5. So y is equal to 2 over negative 5. So this would be negative 2 over 5. So we go on our y-axis, and we're going to go down 2 fifths. It's a little bit hard to tell here, but we're going to connect our dots. This one's not very like graph-friendly because we have fractions, but we're just going to estimate as best as we can. Now let's graph our second line. How would I graph y is equal to 2? I'm going to put a point on 2 on our y-axis, and then what? So if it's just y equals or x equals, it's either going to be a horizontal line or a vertical line. What do you think? Horizontal, horizontal line. Perfect. y equals is a horizontal line. Now our answer is where our two graphs intersect. So where do these two lines intersect? Three, two, two, awesome. Three, two. Because we would go three on our x-axis and up two. Remember, it's always x and then y. So your answer would be three, two. Let's graph five, two, since five is in y-intercept form. Good question. So we solved using our x and y intercept, so a little bit different than just y equals mx plus b. So for our x intercept, we plug in zero for y. And for the y intercept, you plug in zero for x. And then once you plot both of those points, you just connect the dots. Like 
the pink dot where it is. So we put our X intercept at two thirds. So we went to the right on our X axis, two thirds. And then our Y intercept was negative two over five. So it would be a dot there. And then we connect our dots. So it's not past one. Not past one, because it's less than one. This one, again, is not very like graph friendly because it ends up being fractions, so it's really hard to tell um, where it is. It should be more clear on the quiz. But let's do five. So five we have in slope intercept form. I'm going to rewrite it down here just so we have it. Actually, I think I can move it. There we go. So let's graph our first line first. Well, in the first line, what is our y-intercept? So remember, this is in y equals mx plus b. What's our b? Negative 3. So we're going to use our slope and our y-intercept here. What's our slope? Negative 3 over 2. So let's put our y-intercept first. So we're going to go down to negative 3 on the y-axis. How do we do the slope of negative 3 over 2? We go down 3 and to the right 2. It's always to the right. So go down 3 and to the right 2. Down 3 and to the right 2. And then we connect our dots. When you're graphing on the quiz, sometimes it might be helpful if you're connecting dots, use your ID and you can just make a straight line with your ID. Let's graph our second line. Any questions with that one? Okay, let's do the second line. What's our y-intercept, our b? Five, so I'm gonna put a point at five. And what is our slope? One half. So I'm going to go up one and to the right two. So up one to the right two. Up one to the right two. And then we can go in the opposite direction to keep connecting our line. Connect all the points. Where do we intersect? Negative three, two. Negative four, two. Oh, four, two. Negative 4, it should be negative 4, 3, right? Our point here was at negative 4, 3. So just be super careful with your lines. You want to make sure they're accurate so your point is in the right spot. So negative 4, 3, because we went to the left 4 and up 3. So this would be our answer. Where the two lines intersect, that is your answer. So 5.2 we're going to solve our system of linear equations by substitution. So let's start with, let's do number four. I'm going to move it to the bottom so we have more room to work with. So if you guys need to add a page to the homework to make sure you have space, it's important to be neat and organized with your work so you don't make any mistakes. All right, when we solve with substitution, remember you always want to either have x equals or y equals to start. Do we have one of those? Yeah, we actually have both here. So we can pick which one we want to use. Do you want to use the y equals or the x equals? Sure, we can use the y. So y is equal to 10x minus, or 10 minus 2x. So we're going to take what y is equal to and we're substituting it into the y. So I take what y is equal to and I plug that into the y in the other equation. So I have x is equal to, and I take the whole thing for the y and plug it in, 10 minus 2x minus 4. I took the y in the first equation, so 10 minus 2x and plugged it into the y in the second because this is what y is equal to. 
So I took it and plugged it in here. So the second equation stayed the same, but the y part changed to this. So now let's simplify. We want to combine our like terms. If it's on the same side of the equation, you do exactly what it says. So what is 10 minus 4? 6. So you have x is equal to 6 minus 2x. If you have to move it to the other side of the equation, you want to do the opposite. So if you're moving it to the other side of the equal sign, you got to do the opposite. So if we're subtracting 2x, what's the opposite of minus? Plus. So we're going to add 2x to move it to the other side. Now you always want to get your x's on one side of the equation or your variable on one side and the number on the other. So we're going to combine our x's together. What's x plus 2x? 3x. And that's equal to what? 6. You're one step ahead. What do we do next? Divide by 3. So what is x equal? 2. Are we done? No. What do we have to do next? Find y. How do we find y? Plug in 2 into x. Which equation do you want to plug it into? Sure. Let's plug it into the first. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you're plugging it into the correct variable. Sure, we can do the second. That's fine. So I'm plugging it into the x there. So I have 2 is equal to y minus 4. What would I do to solve for y? How do we bring the 4 over? Add 4. So since it's a minus 4, we do the opposite to bring it to the other side. So we add 4. So this would be 6 is equal to y. How would we write our answer? 2 comma 6. Always your x and then your y. Let's do 7. I'm going to move it to the bottom so we have more room. All right, and number 7, do we have x equals or y equals? No, we don't have an x or y all by itself yet. So how do we have, how do we make it an x equals or y equals? What would we do? We have to solve the equation. Which equation do you want to make either x equals or y equals? Delaney, you said the first one? I would probably pick the first one, but you could definitely do the second one too. If we did the second one, let's just take a look. I could add 3y to move it to the other side. So I have x is equal to 4 plus 3y. Do I have, Chris, do I have an x in the first equation to plug this into? No. So we'd have to try something else. So let's do the first equation. What would we have to do in the first equation to make it y equals? Divide by 5. So y is equal to? 2. What would we do next? Plug in y. Plug in y. Luckily for us, we just have y is 2. So we're going to take 2 and plug it into the y. How do you find your Well, it depends on what you have to do. Like, sometimes you might have to, like, move the x to the other side. So, like, here, we had to move the 4 to the other side to make the y all by itself. Here, since 5 is being multiplied to y, we have to divide it to move it to the other side. So, it depends on what's happening in the equation. So, it's not always the case where you'll always divide. It just depends on what is going on. But since it's being multiplied by 5 to move it to the other side, we have to divide. You do the opposite. All right, so we have x minus 3 times 2 is equal to 4. What would we do next? What's negative 3 times 2? Negative 6. So x minus 6 is equal to 4. Perfect. To move the 6 to the other side, we want to do the opposite. So we add 6. So x is equal to? 10. Are we done? Yeah. yeah. We found what x is equal to and we found what y is equal to. So how would we write our answer? 10, 10 comma 2. Perfect. 
So looking at number nine, do we have an x equals or y equals? Nope, not yet. So let's make one of them x equals or y equals. Which one do you want to make? x equals or y equals. Which equation? The first one. The first one is a great choice. The second one we don't really like so much because we would have to move one of the variables and then divide. And it would give us fractions. So because our coefficient in the first one, both of them are actually coefficient of 1, that would be better. What do you want to move? Do you want to make it x equals or y equals? Let's make it y equals. So how do we move the x to the other side? Add x. Perfect. So there's a lot of different ways that you can solve these. You could move the y to the other side, and then you'd have to divide by a negative. But just moving the x and making it y equals is the easiest option, because then you only have one step to do. We already have y is positive, and it's all by itself now. So y is equal to 2 plus x. So anytime your coefficient is 1, you kind of want to stick with that variable and move the other one to the other side. So let's take what y is equal to, and what are we plugging it into? The y in the second equation. So we have 3x minus 5 times, now this whole thing is going to go in the y spot. 2 plus x is equal to negative 4. What would we do next to solve for x? Distribute. Perfect. We're going to distribute the negative 5 inside of our parentheses. So 3x, what's negative 5 times 2? negative 10, and negative 5 times x, negative 5x, and that's equal to negative 4. Now we want our x's on one side and our numbers on the other, the constants on the other. So we already have our x's on the left side. What would we do next? We can combine like terms. What's 3x minus 5x? Negative 2. Since we're they're on the same side, we do exactly what it says. So 3x minus 5x would be negative 2x. Minus 10 is equal to negative 4. Now our x is on the left side of the equation, so we want to move our constant, the number, to the other side. So how would we move the 10 to the other side? Add 10. So negative 2x is equal to 6. What do we do next? Divide by negative 2. So what is x equal? Negative 3. What would we do next? Find the y. Find the y. How? Plug our x into one of the x's. Do you want to plug it into the first equation or the second? Sure, let's plug it into the first. So we have negative negative 3 plus y is equal to 2. What does negative negative 3 turn into? Positive 3 plus y is equal to 2. Now we want the y by itself, so how do we move the 3 to the other side? Subtract 3. So y is equal to negative 1. How would we write our answer? Negative 3, comma, negative 1. Any questions here? Right. None of the questions that we did involves fractions, but I just want to talk about fractions for one second. Let's say we had 2 plus 3 over 4. How would we add a fraction and a whole number? We add a 1 under it. 
How would we add fractions now? No. What do we need in order to add fractions? The same denominator. Same denominator. So what would I have to do to make them the same denominator? Awesome, we're gonna make one four. So I'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by four. So times four times four. Eight. Two times four would be eight, and one times four is four. So this changes to eight over four. Now that our denominators are the same, we can add the numerators together. So eight plus three is 11 over four. The denominator stays the same. So that's how we add fractions. Now when we multiply fractions, let's say we have two times, we'll say one third. Make two over one. We don't, well we multiply straight across. So multiply the tops together and multiply the bottoms together. So two times one is two over three.